Welcome back to another video on the No Input Mixing Board. Today, I'm going to be talking about creating stable oscillators. Now, a stable oscillator is one where the pitch of the oscillator, which is determined by the amount of feedback and the amount of gain in the feedback loop, is separate from the output level that we're listening to, such that we can make it louder or quieter without causing the pitch to go up or down. There are a few ways to create these types of stable feedback loops on the no input mixing board. My favorite way is using the insert channels that I described in the overview video. Now, plugging a tip sleeve cable into just the first click here creates a non-interrupting direct output. When we plug that back into the channel here, we create a feedback loop. I'm going to zero out these channels really quick to my default position, and we're going to give this a listen. You can see that adjusting the gain on the channel changes the volume of it, but does not change the pitch up or down. The pitch on this feedback loop is controlled by the preamp here. completely separate from the volume. Alongside insert channels, we can use a pre-fader auxiliary send. So on the Mackie 1202, the aux1 can be sent uh, as a pre-fader send, which means that the amount of volume that we're sending from this channel is separate. So, turning up the aux1. Many auxiliary sends are post-fader, which means that the amount of signal that is sent out of the channel is determined after you consider the amount of gain that's on the channel, what we're listening to. On the 1202, there's a switch here which can change the aux1 from pre-fader to post-fader. I'm going to show you that difference now. As we've been hearing a stable oscillator with a pre-fader, now as a post-fader, you can hear that as we increase the amount of volume, the signal gets pushed lower. Many auxiliary sends on mixers are post-fader. The auxiliary 2 on the 1202 is always a post-fader send. In situations like these where you don't have either an insert channel or a pre-fader send, another way that you can control the volume separately from the, the amount of feedback in the loop is by using the panning. Treating the no input mixer as a mono instrument, we can establish an amount of signal here. I'm on the aux 2 now. And use panning as our level control. Because we have a feedback loop happening on the left side, and we have nothing happening on the right side right now. Taking several of these oscillators and patching them up there are some interesting sounds that we can make by putting several oscillators together. I'm going to start by tuning all three of these oscillators to about the same pitch in order to create a unison effect, where the slight detuning of the oscillators creates swells and shifts in the overall tone. Give me a moment to tune these up.
create some really lovely movement using this unison effect. We can also tune these up into chords, of course, and they sound very nice together. That's a slightly diminished chord here, but... Still a very lovely sound. Let's drop the... F let's drop the third note down. A minor chord. And let's take the third here, our second note in the triad, bring it up. Finally, I want to talk about uh, the sub-audio range for all of these oscillators. There's a large portion of the potential space for, these, for the gain that we can drive the oscillator into that's in the sub-audio region. With the low cut disengaged, bring it down into a fairly stable pulse. You can hear as we introduce tones against that, we get these really nice pulses and interruptions of the stable tones. We can take this pulse and we can use the EQ to change the character of it, giving it more high, less mid, to make it a sort of a clickier pulse, bring in more mid, bring in more low, make it a slightly lower pulse. These are small adjustments here. And you can see as we bring a second oscillator into the sub-audio range, we start to produce uh, overlapping rhythms between the different sub-audio oscillators that are pulsing at different times here. And we can use the trim to adjust that, so. With all three in the sub-audio range, we create a really nice rolling texture of clicks that we can shape. Hopefully this video has shown a couple of additional tricks or given you some inspirations for how to create stable subloops on the machine as oscillators that you can then combine together in both the audio and the sub-audio range in order to produce a larger, more intentional variety of sounds on your GNOME mixing board.